Okay, so the next one we'll have a look at is uh, the employment visa. Now, the employment visa is issued under the general employment policy. And the approvability test for a Hong Kong employment visa is you need to show that you uh, possess a special skill, knowledge or experience of value to and not readily available in Hong Kong. Moreover, your employer needs to be justified in engaging your services as an expatriate rather than the services of a local person. Now, the general employment policy typically calls for you to be a graduate with a minimum of two years post-graduation working experience. If you're not a graduate then, uh, and you have uh, technical qualifications, yeah, you're expected to have uh, at least five years post-graduation uh, post-qualification working experience in a managerial or supervisory capacity. If you've got no qualifications uh, at all, that is qualifications uh, uh, higher than say a diploma, then you need to have 10 years post-graduation, excuse me, 10 years working experience in a managerial or supervisory capacity. So you can get an employment visa in Hong Kong if you are not a graduate, but the onus is on you to show that you have got significant experience in the, the field that you're interested in going into for the purposes of a visa, um, so that you can anticipate an approval in those circumstances. Um, the, the, the question, I think, is begged as to what would, uh, for example, the following profile of an individual look like? How would it be perceived by the immigration department? Let's say that you are a graduate, and let's say that your his historically your discipline has been in retail. And let's say you've had three or four years of experience in retail, but you're sick of doing that, and so you want to become a coder, and you want to go and work for somebody else. So you come along and you attend a general assembly program, you spend 12 weeks learning how to code, and you're on your way. Um, and then you make an application subsequently for an employment visa for you to remain in Hong Kong to take up employment with an employer that wants to access your skills. Well, quite apart from the fact that if it's a startup, that startup itself needs to go through a little bit of a mini due diligence assessment process as part of the application consideration exercise to be deemed a suitable and credible sponsor. But you yourself will be looked at in the context of the job offer that you've got. And if you're a graduate in, say, social sciences, and you've got four years in retail, and then you come along with uh, a 12-week um, technical qualification in coding, um, the Immigration Department are going to look at that and they're going to say, well, actually, does this job offer correlate with your background? Now, at the moment, it's very difficult to expect the Immigration Department to approve an application like that because you've really got, there's no correlation between the years that uh, represented your education and your formal working experience and the 12 weeks that you've spent actually acquiring coding skills. Um, so there are, there are challenges associated with that. However, if you could couch the application in the context of, say, well, uh, the startup or the business that you're working for is moving into app development because they want to uh, operate specifically in the retail space and you've got some kind of experience in retail that you're bringing to the party that's relevant to the job that's on offer and that all of your background to date combined with the coding skills that you've recently acquired go to make up you possessing special skills, knowledge and experience in that context then you may have an argument for sure. That's the bad news. The good news is that the Immigration Department are increasingly waking up to the reality that not everybody uh, that finds themselves in the tech space uh, come from the normal sort of uh, background of uh, anticipated by the general employment policy. And let me give you an example. <clears throat> I have a client who, um, I need to be careful about how I couch this, but I have a client who is operating in Hong Kong with a number of local employees and been here a few, for a few years in the encryption space. And they put a call out for talent and they couldn't find the talent locally because um, it seems that um, technologists with encryption skills in Hong Kong are a little bit like rocking horse poo. So it wasn't reasonably uh, anticipatable that they could find the skills here locally. But they put a call out for talent and one party who responded uh, happened to be outside of Hong Kong. And he was in another country and he wasn't lawfully employable here. But they wanted to employ him. 
And the way that they went about making the determination to hire him was uh, through a competition, a coding competition. And apparently this young man um, blitzed it, beat everybody hands down. Like I say, I wouldn't know one line of code from another, so I don't know how this thing is materially manifested. But apparently this guy was a bit of a rocket scientist. His problem was that um, he tried to follow the traditional um, um, education into employment trajectory and has spent the first semester uh, in his first year at university and dropped out because it wasn't for him. Um, and apparently he'd been sort of taking digital watches apart when he was five, six years of age and putting them back together again. And, and uh, he was so uh, really good at what he did that he'd hacked his way to the competency that he had. Um, so, as it happened, this young man was from uh, a country where you could apply for a working holiday visa and uh, that allowed him to be brought into Hong Kong to work for three months as a working holiday visa holder, quite lawfully, for my client. And I told my client, well, what we'll do then is we'll, we'll bring him in on a working holiday visa and then you will engage him in Hong Kong, into this community and embed him as fast and as hard as you possibly can and get him giving public talks and get him t teaching people and getting all kinds of really interesting things so that he can showcase his clear and manifest expertise in this space. Um, and uh, that's exactly what we did and uh, when it came and he got, a, he got a, because he's so good at what he did, he was getting a really good salary and so we put the application into the immigration department and anticipated that perhaps uh, he would get denied just on a technical refusal because he simply didn't fall into the bracket of being a professional for the purposes of the general employment policy. Um, and we did some interesting things like have um, his colleagues that were working in the same uh, office as him uh, testify to the skills that they've been able to learn through him being uh, on site for the three months and a whole package of information that basically educated to the immigration department to the reality that uh, it's unreasonable in this space to expect everyone to fit the profile of a policy that was set up 35 years ago. Um, and all credit to the immigration department, they said yes and they approved him. Now that was quite recent and I think it's an indication that the immigration department, well they're always flexible but it's an indication of their essential flexibility and the idea that I think that they are alert to the fact that the world has changed. So just take that on board uh, when you think about uh, your circumstances if you are going to make an application for an employment visa. There are, um, there are certainly opportunities to get approved, but you have to be ready to engage in vigorous argument for those approvals simply because oh, the Immigration Department are trying to keep up with the times. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the employment visa. Um, and I'll talk about the training visa. And the training visa is a, a subspecies of the uh, employment visa and it's uh, set up by the Immigration Department in recognition that uh, there will be a requirement for people on occasion to come to Hong Kong to receive training from a credible Hong Kong uh, employer or to deliver training into uh, a, a credible Hong Kong employer. And these visas are very straightforward to get. You can get a six month limit of stay uh, almost automatically as long as the paperwork stacks up with an absolute maximum of 12 months. Um, condition precedent for a training visa is that you need to have a very detailed training plan. Immigration Department expects to see exactly what's going on over the course of your, uh, the, over the life of your training visa. And if you submit an application for a training visa with a six month timeline, you, and then at the end of the six months you seek to get an extension, the likelihood is that you won't get the extension. Um, unless it's just because you need it for a month, maybe two, because you didn't quite finish up what you thought you were going to finish up or you underestimated how long it was actually going to take to complete the training. But, uh, but it's not a flexible concept, unfortunately. You can get a 12-month limit of stay if you are um, prepared to put together a very, very comprehensive training plan and be ready to argue for the 12 months, uh, it being justified given the nature of the training that's going on. But you can go into a training visa application with a high level of confidence that if the sponsoring employer is credible, then you will get approved. The problem is this. You can't use a training visa as a stepping stone into an employment visa for that same employer. 
you give an undertaking at the time that you make your application for the training visa that you will leave Hong Kong at the end of your period of training. And if you then seek to make an application to take up employment with that employer, um, normally the Immigration Department respond negatively to those applications. Now, there have been instances in the past where there's been a clear and present need for the specific skill set that is anticipated to be engaged full time after the period of training is over, and the Immigration Department have bought into that argument every now and again. But as I say, you can't use it as a stepping stone. You need to anticipate it being uh, a, 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 an immigration stage that will allow you to work here legally for the purposes of training, and then you can leave. And that's, that's the bad news. The good news is that if you then go away and carry on what you're doing elsewhere for between six and 12 months, you then have an opportunity to make an application for an employment visa with that same employer on the new circumstances that have arisen in the meantime. And as long as you pass the approvability test under the general employment policy for you showing that you possess special skills, knowledge and experience of value to and not readily available in Hong Kong, then there's a reasonable chance that you could get an employment visa subsequently. But you have to be able to pass that, uh, that test uh, in of itself irrespective of the fact that you spent time training with, uh, with that employer uh, prior to you making the application for the employment visa.